Good morning. I'm doing this video live and I haven't tested any of these steps. So uh, basically I'm answering the question in the forums from Sonic uh, Sonic X278. It says, need help placing sprite frames. And then he gave an example where you wanted to make like a sleeping animation. So um, I'm trying to encourage you to use a tool and I'm going to show you why it's easier and simpler to uh, go ahead and do it that way. First of all, you got to understand how these sprites work. Basically, what you're talking about is you want to have a, the letter Z, and you want to have it be small, and then you want to finish up large, but at the same time, you want it to travel diagonally from left to right and bottom to top. So what I've done in this example is put together just three frames. Probably going to look really ugly when I'm done because I didn't do anything to make it beautiful. And I started off with a small image, and basically all of these, first of all, all these images are 128 pixels by 128. They all have to be the same. That's step number one. If you want to create an animation, the way it works is all frames need to have the same texture size. Now, what's in there is the part that's moving. So I'm only using a small portion of this texture, and then I'm using this small portion over here for the middle one, and a much larger one for the third frame. Initially, all the images are the same, 128 by 128, but when I package them up in Texture Packer, what it's going to do is going to take these, it's going to find all the empty spaces and try to pack the textures together in as small of a space as possible where they are not overlapping. Now, this is the part that I was telling you that is really hard to do. Now, you could do this on your own. You could simply stitch together three 128 textures and not worry about wasted space. But that's not very efficient. Now it's easy to code, but not efficient. So if you want something that is both efficient, well, if you want something that is efficient, then you're going to want to use a tool. I mean, this is where I'm saying that anything beyond just a few frames becomes intractable in terms of like doing it yourself and making it just perfect. That's why these tools are are here, why they exist. Sorry, drink a little coffee there. Okay, so we got these images, and uh, I've already exported them to um, my drive and I'm going to just bring them up here and show you what they look like individually. So there's frame one, frame two, frame three. So basically you can see how it, it gives us the impression of diagonal motion and growing. So then we're going to go ahead and open texture packer and uh, this thing is changing all the time so let me take a look here. All right, so the current version here, it says uh, Corona SDK, so that sounds good. And we'll just uh, double click that. And let me grab my three frames, and I simply drag them on here. And bear with me, because it's been a little while since I've used it, and the interface has changed a little bit. Uh, publish Sprite Sheet. And let me go ahead and get the folder. So, pa -pa. And I'm going to call it uh, ZZZ. So let's do that. Boom. Done. A few seconds later, let me bring over my project. What that did was produce two files, zzz.lua and zzzpng. So let me open that up. So as you can see, now it's got all three textures in there, but it's found a way to package them so that they are not overlapping and yet perfectly fitting in this very nice 128 by 110. It's even smaller than our original texture. So for the cost of three textures, we are now, or I'm sorry, for the cost of less than one third of our original texture size, we've got three sprite images. So let's take a quick look at the um, Lua file that came out of that. Let me just double click on that. All right, so this is the file where you pasted something, and I've, I've been giving you examples too. This should look familiar. Now, uh, basically all this is is a module that provides some information in a usable format so that we can pull out like the frames, where they're at, uh, etc. Basically we feed this information into the graphics library and the sprite uh, display new sprite library, or that is function. So, um, you know, this stuff is it's deep and there's a lot of documentation on this. This is where I was pointing out last night that there's so much more to this than just doing one kind of thing that you really have to go in and read all the docs and sort of break it down bit by bit so you can understand because there's a lot of, for example, this bit here is telling us that this sprite starts at X position 80, Y position 62, and it is 35 pixels wide and 46 pixels tall. 
But then it does some other little magic here where it's saying, okay, yeah, yeah, right. So this is, it's 35 by 46 in the source image, but originally it was 128 by 28. And we got some other little adjustments here. And what all this does is tells Corona how to properly display that. So it is displayed as it was when we originally created it, which was, let me show you, which is here. So it takes that little image, which is way off somewhere else in the source sheet and says, whoop, put it down here. Pretend that the whole thing was 128. Yeah, I know everybody's going to watch this like whoop, they like that sound effect. So 128 by 128. But the point is, is it's done all this rearranging. So it's as if as if we never did the export. So Corona is saying, oh, OK, well, 128 by 128. The image is down here. Display done. It's like we did a new image rect with this. And then we did another new image rect with this and this. But it, it's not doing that. It's swapping out frames instead. Okay, so let's just go ahead and see if I've coded this up right. I already pre-wrote this bit here. Let me grab. This is the part where if it doesn't work, I will correct it after finishing this video, and then I'll zip it all up and send it off to you guys. Uh, where are we? Let me get this. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's way too fast, but you get the point. So let me slow that down a little bit. Basically, what I did here was I said, uh, get the info sheet, which is the thing generated by Texture Packer, and then create a new sprite, a uh, new image sheet based on the details that are provided by the get sheet function method in there. And if we look at get sheet, get sheet says return self sheet, and self sheet is this right here, and it has a frames map. And it tells us how wide and how high the original, the, the uh, texture source is. So this stuff's all needed by new image sheet to convert an image into to properly slice it up in a sense. So now it's all sliced up. It knows how big each of the individual frame images is. And then we create this uh, sequence data table. Now I could have done this, I believe, like this, just a single one, but I tend to have multiple frame uh, descriptions or animation descriptions in my sequence data. So I just keep it in this format all the time so that I could do another one like Snooze 2. For example, let's say I wanted to make Snooze 2 and make it much slower, like 10 times slower. So it's the same as Snooze 1, but now let's set the sequence. Oh, I didn't do this right. So originally this should have been Snooze. But I'm going to make it Snooze 2 now, and I'll just change the label below it to Snooze 2. And now, same sequence, but much, much slower. Obviously, too slow. So let's, let's adjust that a little bit. 1500. How that? So 1500 is saying total time to play the animation. So each frame is going to be 500 milliseconds. Second frame, 500 milliseconds. Third frame, 500 milliseconds. And then we say loop count 0. And I think you can set this to 0 or minus 1, but I use 0 which means loop forever, and loop direction by default, but I'm setting it here, is forward. In other words, start on frame one, go to frame two, and then go to frame three, and then start over again at frame three, or I'm sorry, frame one. And I can't remember if it's a ping pong or something like that. Anyway, it's in the docs, and I get these things confused, which is why I need to look up the docs too. But there's another way to say go from one to three to one to three, and just keep going back and forth. We're not going to do that. Let me rerun this. Now it's going to be a little bit faster, but not nearly as fast as that first one. So this is the one I'm going to commit, and then you should play around with this. But as you can see, it only took me a few seconds to, okay, maybe a minute to do the texture export. And it was super simple. This tool does everything for you. Uh, and you really should avoid, um, you should avoid trying to do this stuff by hand because, I mean, it's great as a learning experience to understand the concept of sprites and sprite sheets. But at the end of the day, a tool is always going to do it more efficiently, and you're going to save yourself a lot of effort. So that's my advice, and best of luck to you on your project. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.